The Secret Diary of Richard E. Byrd, a highly decorated naval officer and intrepid explorer. So after Richard E. Byrd passed away, his son shared out a segment of his diary that was quite unusual. So this claims to be around 1947, the February and March of that year, when Richard E. Byrd travelled to the southern areas of the Pole or the North Pole. It states here the North Pole. However, a lot of the interviews with Richard Byrd when he was alive states that all this took place in the South Pole. So there is already a contradiction in this story. But you will be able to see the actual diary log to the left hand side of the screen right now. And yeah, it's all been sort of placed into a readable format. His handwriting, <laughs> I've got a handwritten version, but uh, yeah, it, it's not all that readable i put a segment below right where i am at right now on this camera display but yeah you can see here the actual diary entries it appears to be nothing untoward at current stage yes they've seen some mountains that perhaps shouldn't have been there but then all of a sudden their, their gyroscopes go mental which they would over the poles anyway but then they're going across green lush landscape and they see an elephant like creature but then they look again it's a mammoth, a wally freaking mammoth that they see. And no sooner after that, they're accosted by some UFOs that get them in a tractor beam. And these sort of UFOs are golden in colour and they have swastikas upon their actual shells or, or housings. And then they take Richard Admiral Byrd down into some sort of crystalline city that looks very futuristic. And then they talk to him about humankind. And the fact that humankind has been experimenting with atomic bombs and nukes and things, they're very concerned about the human race. So they've got a message for Richard Byrd to take back to the surface and to the governments to sort of air a word of caution. Now, they're a lot more technologically advanced than us guys on the surface. And they say that they're in the inner areas of the earth so there seems to be entry points to the north and south poles and apparently Richard E. Byrd in a separate interview said that these ships could actually travel between north pole and south pole in an instant that they encountered a new enemy up in the poles but that was during project high jump now I have got some segments of some of his interviews and there's one that I can probably put on here without getting too badly flagged <laughs> so I'll have that coming up in a moment for you but yeah carry on reading that diary entry over to the left hand side so yes, this diary entry has been moving fairly quickly. If you want to read this in its entirety, I'll put a link inside of the video description. Be sure to go and check on that out, heck yes. So yeah, talking of hard to read, there is actually a handwritten version of this that you can find if you're very lucky on the net. I've only found one page so far, but it was all on there years ago when I first came across this story, but you know what the Tinterweb's like now. Anyhow, I'll put the segment that I found directly below me right now. Have a look at that. Isn't that freaking lovely? Heck yes it is. So yeah, this is said to have been put out by Richard E. Byrd's son after Richard E. Byrd passed away. I don't think anybody's tracked down the son of Rich D. Bird and actually asked him whether this is legit and whether he actually put it out on the net. But then I haven't seen them come forward either and state the claim that it's not fake. Uh, yeah, so I really don't know what's going on there. I've tried to do a bit of research into the legitimacy of this diary and it's leaking, but I can't really find anything on Tinter Webs. If you find anything out there in the viewerverse, be sure to hit us up in the comments and let us know. Stick it in there. That'd be freaking awesome. If you do manage to find something worthwhile, I will pin it as a comment. So yeah, please do that. Heck yes. So I did mention Project High Jump. Project High Jump, when you look into it, has got a few sorts of weird theories about that too. That it was actually a project to intercept Nazis up inside of the Antarctic that were looking for the entrances to the Hollow Earth. And the weird thing is, is these peoples that live with inside of the, the actual Earth that he encounters, apparently had the blue eyes, the yellow, the blonde hair, kind of fits the whole idea of the Aryan race that Hitler was so sort of divested in. So it's very odd, very odd indeed that there was this Project High Jump that unrelated. However, a lot of the other theories around Project High Jump and the fact that there might be UFOs and ancient civilizations all marries in quite so well. Is that time of the boring. video, people. Is this real? <sighs> Or is this fake? Now I've had a poll running throughout this video, I'd imagine. And yet I'll be closing off that poll to see what the results are of said poll. So yeah, please hit it up. If you haven't already, hit whether you think it's real or whether it's fake. And then I'm going to be giving you my idea of what I think of this whole story and elements that I think might be true, might be fake, etc, etc. 
It's a bit of good fun, isn't it? It really is. So yeah, is this real or is it fake? Yeah, there we go. So I think this is a bit of a weave. A bit of a weave of truth and fiction mixed and married together. And it's very hard to discern what is true from what is fake. Did they see Wally Mammoths out of the window? I'm not thinking that they did. Did they actually get accosted by UFOs that arose out of the waters and taken down to some sort of lush crystallized city with alien beings that claim to be from within inside of our planet? It's a little bit far-fetched, isn't it? It's a bit far-fetched. It's a little bit journey to the center of the earth mixed with a lot of the rest of the sci-fi films of great days. Even Godzilla vs. King Kong was sort of based on the Hollow Earth theory. So there's a lot going for this, isn't there? Well, in fact, there's a lot not going for this, to be fair, because whenever you try to do Google searches on the Hollow Earth or Agatha, you just get loads of freaking movies coming back now. Hollywood movies. It's like they're trying to paste over the truth really quickly <laughs> with all these Hollywood movies to make you think that it's a world of fiction. And that's why it becomes really difficult to discern whether this is real or whether it's fake. Now, I came across this story eons ago when you know the tinter web was quite early in conception to be fair and it's something that i follow quite closely and i quite like the hollow earth theory and you're probably thinking well why do you like the hollow earth theory so much captain steve well you know it's a bit of an oddity the actual construct of the earth the way that it's taught so we're all told in classrooms that the earth's core is iron and it's solid and then you've got the crust and the mantle and all that sort of shizzle However, if you put something that is a solid under pressure and under heat, it's going to turn from a solid into a liquid, it's a magma state, but then it's going to turn into like a gas, a gaseous, and then heat it further from there, it's going to turn into a plasmatic reaction. Pretty much, take for instance our sun, up in the freaking night sky, yeah, the sun, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much what it is, a massive, great, big, plasmatic nuclear reaction. And that's kind of what I would imagine the centre of our Earth is. Perhaps we've got a, a small sun in the centre of our planet. You think, well, are all planets hollow then? Well, take example for Saturn. So Saturn's got that ring of asteroids around it. Imagine more and more asteroids come into that ring. It's going to make like a solid pathway, isn't it? And then more and more asteroids, it's going to slowly get thicker and thicker and thicker. And it's going to cause like an outer shell around Saturn. But then after it gets to a certain state, perhaps the pressure on Saturn, the inside planet, will crumble and go to the outside. So then you end up with maybe a small sun inside of a shell. And who's to say that all planets haven't got openings at the top and the bottoms? You know, some sort of like exhaust vent. And that's what keeps our planet rotating and the magnetical... Hmm... It does make you wonder. I mean, we haven't dug down too deep into the Earth's crust. We don't know for sure that it's a metal core, do we? I don't know. If I'm wrong, hit us up inside of the comments. But yeah, it's a bit of an oddity. But I quite like the whole hollow Earth idea because it can then explain quite a lot of other things like, well, where is Noah's Ark? Where was the Garden of Eden? All those sorts of things. Yeah, hollow Earth is inside of our planet. It's inside of Agatha. Yeah, because I've actually named the place. I mean, there was a German U-boat that was supposed to have gone missing and gone to a place called New Berlin inside of the Hollow Earth. And apparently they got to write letters to all of their families out on the outer world. Yeah, of their journey into the Hollow Earth. So do I believe that the Earth is actually hollow? The jury's out on that one. It's something that I entertain from time to time and I love reading stories on it. But do I believe it is true? Do I believe all this is real or fake? The joy's out on this one. I'm 50-50. I'm freaking 50-50, people. Until next time. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye again. Hope you had fun. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.